This video shows how to do a basic setup of most common megatrees. We're going to set up a 16, 32, and 48 output in some different configurations. This does not include any long range. If you do have long range expansion in your system, see our other videos at holidaycore.com forward slash long range. All right, so this is a very common kit. It is 16 outputs and 50 pixels per output. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the configuration in the controller. Now, before you build any project, you do need to know how many pixels and how many outputs you'll be using. And if you're using a kit like this, it's pretty easy. It's already well defined for you. Now, this video does assume that we are starting here in the web interface. If you do not have access to the web interface, you will need to see some of our other general setup videos to show you how to configure the controller to access from your PC to go ahead and complete this configuration. Okay, so also there may be slight differences in this video between what the actual version of your firmware and interface looks like, so please be aware that some of these buttons may be different locations. So the first place that you'll end up is on the status page, and this just provides you some basic information about the controller, what data is being received by the controller. What we want to do is we want to go to the design tab. And what we're going to do is go ahead and go over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new design. We're going to call this a test nine. I'm just going to type test nine up here. And um, what we're going to do then is check off what configuration this controller has. Now, because of the highly configurable nature of Holiday Coral controllers, they may be slightly different. So you may need to, to adapt these instructions to your specific setup. Now, uh, in this particular case, we're using a control that does have a long range expansion board and our SPI. Now, SPI is the actual cables coming out of the controller. So these are these little cables here. They have the data plus the power and those hook up to our pixels. And so when we say SPI, that's what we're referring to. We're referring to these little cable outputs uh, at the controller level. So we know that we have those, and if we go here, we can see that there's some in here, and we can see that they're actually configured for 50 pixels right now. Um, they're not completely configured, but we're going to get that to that point. So back to the design here, and uh, again, I'm going to put in here test 9. And what I'm going to do is check off this first box. So we have 16 SPI ports. So the Hinkspix Pro has the ability to have up to three expansion boards inside a box. It varies by box and varies by the controller type, but there are up to three. And we would check off how many of these we have. Okay, uh, now what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and then tell it of which of these three outputs these things are located on, these SPIs. Now, and again, our case, we only have one 16 port SPI output. So we can go up here to outputs and we can see that the SPI is actually located on 17 through 32. So we've checked this off and that does give us this little thing here at the bottom, you see where it's asking us what we're going to put up in those outputs. But we need to go over here 17 through 32 and say it is an SPI. Okay, now uh, what we wanna do is go down here uh, and we're going to add some strings. Now there's two major sections here. There's strings and then there's the actual SPI board. So this is where the physical cables are coming out. And then up here, we're going to name the strings. We're actually going to tell it what it was. Now, of course, if you have a complex display with many different things, candy canes and arches and matrixes and, you know, snowflakes, you would then put all those in here. Ours is going to be super simple. So I'm going to go ahead and say add more strings just so we have some more. I'm going to add, and we've got up to 17 here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to give it a name so I know what it is. And I'm just going to call it Megatree Output 1. And I'm going to come over here. Now, this video is for most typical setups, which are usually less than 170 pixels for any given cable output. In fact, this kit is just 50 pixels, so it's very easy. If you have a unique setup which has more than 170 pixels on any single output, you will need to use these additional buttons or boxes over to the right. So I'm just going to start off with a universe. A universe is up to 65,000 different groups of channels. So if you think about a single universe, it's going to be comprised of channels. And those channels 
turn off individual lights. So if we look at a pixel, we would see that it has red, green, blue. We need a one, two, three. We need three channels for red, green, and blue. And within a universe, we have up to 510 of those. So if you take 510 divide it by three, which is three channels for each pixel, that comes up to around 170.6. So we can easily fit 170 pixels into just one universe. And these numbers on the universes can be anything you want. They can be, again, one to all the way up to around 65,000. Uh, so we're just going to make it easy on ourselves. We're going to start at one. We don't have any fancy display. We have no existing elements. If you have some other existing elements with other universes, you may want to skip them. Start at 101, for example. So I'm just going to start one. And I'm just going to put in how many channels. Now, how many channels? If we have 50 pixels on each of these outputs. So 50 pixels here are connected up to one of these outputs. That's 50 times three, three channels for every pixel. So I put in 150. And so this nomenclature is universe, colon, and then channel number. And we then would just simply repeat this all the way down. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that and return just a moment. All right, I've now completed the setup, and you can see that I've simply just named them 1 through 16 because we have 16 outputs on this setup with 16 outputs and 50 pixels each. So I simply just sequentially added a number to each of the universes till I got to 16. Again, we don't need these over here because these are only if we're using more than 170 pixels on a single output, which is not the case here. All right, so the next step is we need to tell the controller where to put these. So these have our universes, which is what we're ultimately going to put in our sequencing application, in this case, X lights. And we need to tell it what to use and map this universe and channel over to which physical output cable. All right, uh, now just FYI, the physical ports may be labeled 1 through 16. But you may have a controller that actually has cable labels that say 17 through 32 or 33 through 48. So this is completely normal. So if you look on the board, you will see 1 through 16 um, on every single SPI board, even if you have multiples, um, because that board is designed for multiple use. It could be used in all three or just two or one. So be aware that they may shift. So for example, in this case, if our cables are labeled 17 through 32 coming out of the controller box, we would say 17 is going to be the cable label 17 is actually going to map up to the physical port number one. Okay, so first thing we need to do, is just click over here. So we're gonna say the physical cable, cable number one or 17 maybe. I'm going to click that. It's going to turn green. I'm going to go up here and click the string that I need to connect to it. It then beeps, and I click down here, and I click the next one. I'm going to go ahead and complete that. Be right back. All right. I've now clicked on each one of these physical string ports mapped to this physical port and clicked up here. Now, this one's empty at the bottom, and you can leave that, and that'll be fine. Now, first thing we can do, uh, while this is normally not necessary for such a simple setup, but we can click up here and say sanity check strings. It says the string data is valid. If it said index four was wrong, so let's go ahead and simulate an error. So let's go ahead and just put a number in here that is too high, and we'll just sanity check it. It'll say string index four. Well, index is right here, and in this column, we go to four, go over to the row, and it says channel two out of range. So this is one, two, three, four. And you can see that we have a number that in this case should be between one and 512, but is actually channel 900. So the tool will tell you if there's an error in your setup and you can just click that to make sure everything is okay. Now that checks just the strings right in here under this. Now we're going to sanity check the entire design. So we're going to go ahead and click this perform a design check. Click that, and it says design checks OK. Now, normally this doesn't have an error. If you get an error, the most common reason is too many channels on an output, um, overutilizing the number of channels, which is you know, not that common given how many channels you can have on, a, on an output, uh, but it can happen. So we're all good to go there. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to save this configuration to the SD card. Now, just a word of note, your controller must have a mini HD card in the Hinkspix Pro. Uh, if you receive your controller and purchased it from Holiday Coro, normally that SD card is pre-installed into the slot already. 
and we can go ahead and save that and it says here the design has been saved and it's on your SD card and so what we're going to do is now put that con configuration into operation. Now, why this matters is, is you think, well, why didn't it just apply it? Because we may have multiple configurations, sort of like profiles. So one time you may want this set up for your Halloween display, then your Christmas display, then your July 4th display. And so you can load and save multiple profiles and immediately install, remove, change them, or test configurations uh, when you're configuring something to see if that's the way you want to use it. So I'm going to go up here. We have test nine. I'm going to install selected configuration. It says it has been installed. Please, please reset to make operational. And so to do that, we go over here to reset and we click the reset button and I'll be right back. All right, now it's rebooted and we can go back in and we can look at the settings. Um, now at the lowest level, we have the output settings. And in this particular case, we're not working with the long range. See our other videos for that. We're looking at these SPI ports for just our general setup. And what we can see here is that it has configured it. And so let's go through how it has done this configuration for you. So here we have a start channel and an end channel. Now it's important to understand that in output settings, start channels and end channels are not DMX universe channels. They are just an address number used internally within the controller to map channels from outputs over to logical DMX addresses under this tab, the E131 ArtNet tab. Okay, so we start at one. Uh, we didn't start at another number uh, like we maybe normally would if we have a long range receiver and other channels being used ahead of it. Uh, we start at one and we use 50 channels and 50 channels is on um, 50 pixels is 150 channels so 50 times 3 is 150 channels and the rest of these settings generally uh, you can leave the same this is the protocol that is used by all holiday coral pixel strings uh, and you're all set there so everything looks good and you'll see that we have one all the way through 2400 that's 2400 channels of data for 16 strings of 50 pixels each. So let's go ahead and confirm that that matches up what we have here on the ArtNet E131 tab. So uh, one key piece here, if you ever have any weird problems with your pixels, you can adjust the speed depending upon the pixel type. Uh, if you ever have problems, just reduce this number to 700. Um, and so what we have here is we have a universe number one through 16, just like we entered in our design tool. And we also have 150 channels per universe. And we have the controller start channel at one and the end controller channel at 2400. So everything here looks perfect. Now, at this point, you've now configured your outputs. You can now test them. And that's not a bad idea. We just go from here right up to test outputs, SPI. And what we can do is now turn these on. So this is port one, which is if we had a cable coming out, might be labeled 17. You could check that and then say blink white. And now your cable labeled 17 or the first cable in that output range would be blinking white. If it is, great. You have successfully configured that. You can then do all of them and test all of them. At that point, all of the lights should be blinking white on that SPI board. Uh, 17 through 32. So if it is not doing that, or your pixels are doing something unusual, they're not blinking, some of them aren't working correctly, troubleshoot there first. Reach out to Holiday Core at support at holidaycore.com for email, or go to holidaycore.com forward slash contact us, and let us know what your issue is with the lights and why they're not working in this test mode. They should be working. If they are not, do not proceed until they are all working correctly in this test mode. So we're going to go ahead and clear that so that they're not blinking. Now what we're going to do is go up here and we're going to pull up X lights. So again, just to recap here, we are using universes 1 through 16. This is a super simple setup. We'll open up X lights. Um, and where we'll start is on the controllers tab. So if you want to think about how this is working internally, What's happening is, is that data is coming from the sequence, going through the model or layout into a controller configuration. Then it is going to the E131 tab, and then it's going to the outputs 
to the actual pixel. So there's a there's a string of connections that need to be made and line up. So what we need to do is continue on from our DMX. So we're going to say add Ethernet. Add Ethernet is the protocol or the method of transfer of data to the controller, and that refers to the jack that's on the far right of the Inkspix Pro controller. So we could just put in here Mega Tree Controller if we want. You can also select Hinkspix if you want. Uh, now, we're going to enter the IP address, and you saw that that's in red. That's because you've got to have it. Now, your IP address is what you've already configured before. Uh, that, of course, is located up here, and that would have been configured previously in your other video. So we just need to put that information into our configuration for XLite so it knows where to send the data. Now, if you will be using an SD card for playback, that is called Hinkle Standalone Mode, and that is for a different level. Uh, you first definitely want to get this all working with a wired connection before you skip to the SD card playback. That is a very advanced topic, um, and you should absolutely be able to completely execute your sequences from X Lights before you move into an SD card playback. Okay, now, uh, and as I recapped before, uh, this is x -Lights, but other applications will configure in a similar way, and our controllers are industry standard protocols, so they'll work with all different types of applications. All right, so we're going to have to give it a start number of the universe, and so our start number was universe 1. Now, if we'd start on 101, select that. All right, and how many universes? We got 16, and in this case, the setup is so simple because every single um, universe is exactly 150 channels. We can just type that. Now, if we had some inconsistent numbers where we were doing a more complex display, such as one with a star or some candy canes, and there's 99 pixels or 270 pixels, we may have to go up here and check individual sizes and set the number of pixels for each universe. But in our case, you can see each universe is just defaulting to uh, the 150. So everything will be fine. Uh, you may also see some options down here for upload and output, up, uh, uploading the output and input. Um, you should consider that an advanced topic and only utilize that if you're familiar with what function that is performing. So I'm going to come over here. Now that we've got that configured, you can see the channel count that's within X lights. This is its own addressing system. Does show 2400 channels, so we're looking good there. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to move to the layout tab. Now we have to tell X lights how to send data to that tree. We have to define where the pixels are actually connected. So I'm going to go up here to this create new tree icon, and I am going to just go down here and click. And I can drag it. You can also, of course, come down here. If I click in this blank area, you can set a background image and put a picture of your house in here if you want and scale these appropriately. Okay, so we'll just go up here and give it a name, Mega Tree. And we tell it how many degrees. Typically, it's 180. And how many strings? We have 60. We have 50 pixels per string. And we're going to start on the bottom left uh, if you're starting down here. So you can start on the bottom left bottom right, you can do all kinds of things. But for most simplicity, it's bottom left, goes up, next string, two, three. If you ever want to know how that's laid out, you can right click on this, say node layout, and you can actually see a layout showing all of the strings. So we see that this is the bottom of the element and it says node one, string one. And then all the way at the top, it's node 50, string one. And then next to that is node, uh, node one, string two. Uh, you can also look at the actual layouts um, in the way that the pixels are running by looking at the wiring view. This can be a little confusing and uh, may not make complete sense. And so this will show you where the universes are actually laid out. Now this is showing reverse view. So this is showing you if you're looking from the tree looking forward. Uh, if you want to look at it from the front, then there you go. One, universe one, two, and this has got the nomenclature universe channel, and you can see the channels going up. So all these little tools just help you make sure you've got everything right. Okay, so at this point, we have actually configured the entire tree. We just hit save, um, and now what I would do is generally recommend before you go to sequencing, make one more test run. Go up to tools, go to test, 
and then test the outputs. Now, this does have two functions. Um, you've got outputs and models, uh, and you can test them either way. You can test individual universes if you're ever having a problem with trying to match up. I think this is universe one, and you turn it on and it doesn't turn on the lights you expect, you may need to uh, make some adjustments to your design. Uh, but we're going to test the entire model. We're going to come over here to Mega Tree, and we're just going to check off the entire tree, right? So this is composed of many different nodes or pixels, uh, but we're just going to test the entirety of the entire model. So I go over here to Background, and I select Background only. I just push the speed up usually over here, and you'll see why in a second. I make sure that this checkbox for Output to Lights. Now, this will be sending data from X Lights over to the tree in real time. So at this point, with this slider slid up, your tree would be completely white if properly configured. You can also come over here to RGB cycle and you can do a red, green, blue, white, red, green, blue, white, and you can just how fast it changes. This is good for testing lights if you're doing burn in or something like that. So if this test passes and everything is working okay and your lights are all lighting up as expected, Great, move on to the next level. Now, if you have not gotten it working, again, pixels showing weird things, not coming on, some aren't working, whatever, don't proceed until you get this working in test mode. Okay, next step here is sequencer. Now we're going to do some automated output, not just test data. So we're going to sequencer tab. I'm going to go up here and say file, new sequence. And normally you do a musical sequence, but for your first test, try an animation with no audio. And we're going to select 50 milliseconds, and we just say uh, done. Okay, there's my mega tree, and uh, it's actually if I click on it, showing all the strands. You could sequence each individual strand. Uh, you can get to that level if you want. Uh, in this case, we're just going to throw a real quick uh, real quick uh, effect on there. So I'm just going to drag this out so you can better see our tree down here. Um, and you can zoom in with your mouse wheel and see it better. I'm just going to drag an effect down here. We're going to take the butterfly effect. I'm going to left mouse drag, and I'm going to drop it onto here. And there it goes. Now, your tree may not be working at this point because you need to tell X lights that you want to output data. So you need to come up here to the right-hand side in the toolbar and say output to lights. At this point, it is sending the actual data necessary to make your tree do this. And then, of course, now you can adjust your effects like this. Make them longer. You can tweak the types of things you want them to do. You could do, you know, random types of things. You can see everything you want to do is possible here. Uh, and of course, you can just drag more effects down until you get your sequence built, and then you play the whole thing, just like that. And you can see it going all across the timeline here at the top, and you're done. You would simply just save that. And now you have configured your mega tree.